Hey guys, it's Troy here, and I wanted to talk to you about an underrated and probably not much talked about fountain pen company, the Arnold Fountain Pen Company. These are all Arnold's from here on over, and these have been in my collection for a while, except for this one. This one just came in just a couple of days ago, and uh, it was a new old stock pen, as was this one here I probably got from the same company selling on Etsy. I don't know how many more they've got, but I only paid $5 for this. So let me tell you a little bit about the Arnold Company. And, you know, you can always go to richardspens.com, and uh, Richard Bender has done a great job of having uh, a lot of information available for people. So that's my first go-to source. And then some, there are some message boards online too. Uh, but Richard's uh, Pens is always a great first stop for me. So the Arnold Fountain Pen Company uh, was located in Petersburg, Virginia. Now, that may not mean a whole lot to most of you, but it does to me uh, because it's a, I live right off from I-95 in North Carolina, and that pen company is right about two hours right up I-95 south of Richmond. So it's only about a two-hour drive to get there. They were founded in 1935 by Remy L. Arnold, and the company made cheap but competent pens and pen-pencil combos, primarily lever fillers. And these are lever fillers, and this is a combo pen, uh, and there are also pen pencil sets that they put out, and this is a button filler. Matter of fact, that was the first button filler that I ever worked on and restored. So they uh, made a huge number of pens in a broad range of eye-catching colors and patterns, and at one point became the largest manufacturer or producer in the world. Their pens were priced from only like 19 cents to 89 cents, so that was definitely the low end, and they were definitely a third tier manufacturer, not one of the big boys out there. They went for the low end, and most of their stuff ended up in dime stores and discount stores. Hey, I'm old enough to remember dime stores. Uh, I used to go shopping in them when I was growing up. They made a small number of pens with gold nibs. And those pens are very uncommon. A lot of their pens were had stainless steel nibs, or just plain steel nibs, rather, and uh, maybe some gold plating over it. So they, the company survived making ballpoint pens until 2005. So just within you know, the past 15 or, or 20 years. So this is my collection um, of some Arnold's, and I think thought I had a couple more laying around here that are probably in a box somewhere. But, like I said, I, I don't have a model name for these, but um, this one here and this one are identical. Uh, and these were new old stock, so they're still out there. And you can see that it's really got some tarnish on uh, the hardware, or the furniture as some people call it. Uh, you know, the clip, the band, um, and on the end, you've got on the finial and um, on the bottom end there you know there are, there's actually some tarnish on this one I tried to clean it up some and I got out my fur, my uh, metal polish and tried to clean this up as best I could uh, it does say Arnold right there on the clip and I'll, I'll tell you what I'll open up this one so you can see the nib rather than the other one because it is inked up uh, but they've got a nice little nib here for you. I'll get you a good close-up of that. So there you go. So various colors. You can see that the green striated um, is fairly common. Red. It's a nice looking red. This one was in much better condition. It's got the smaller cap band than the other two. And a fountain pen pencil combo. Just an old beat up pen that I picked up dirt cheap. You know, you can get the fountain pen nib on one side and a mechanical pencil that, last I knew, it still propelled some lead. And then this one here was a button filler. Nice little Arnold clip. This was actually a decent looking pen. A lot of companies, after you had the Parker Dual Fold like this here that came out, a lot of companies tried to duplicate or come close to what they were doing uh, because it was such a big seller and it was a real big hit with people. So a lot of imitators. So you've got their nib there, a little ink window, 
right there. That's still, you know, it's orangey, and it's, I think it's probably meant to be orangey. I don't think that's from staining. Uh, and then you've got the blind cap here at the end. Let's go ahead and get that off. Twist, 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 and a button filler. Like I said, this was the first button filler that I ever worked on. Uh, so I replaced the sack in that, and I learned how they work, and uh, how the pressure bar fits in. Here's what I'm going to tell you about this. Um, you know, there's a lot of people have criticism for Arnold because, you know, oh, they're cheap garbage. Um, well, you know, I will tell you this writes every bit as good as a Parker Duofold. Just my opinion and just my experience, I actually prefer writing with this more so than this. This is, you know, a little girthier, obviously more expensive, and from one of the top companies that were manufacturing at the time. Uh, but this here, right here, this little Arnold, actually writes every bit as good, if not slightly better, than that Parker Duofold. Just my personal opinion. It may be an unpopular one, but there you have it. So, you know, they had some pens that were mediocre, I, I, I suppose, because I've heard some people talk about how they had some... Uh, some real turds for pens, but also they had some competent. Richard Bender described it as competent. My experience with them has been they're competent. Uh, they're decent. I'll show you a writing sample of this one right here uh, momentarily. So I got my little handy dandy writing pad here and uh, this is one I picked off from uh, Timu here just recently and actually does fairly decent with fountain pens. So, this little pen, it is little for me. It's smaller than I like. It's definitely not the size that I would prefer. But, when you post it, and it does post nicely and securely, you know, 1930s and 40s, uh, pens were typically just a little smaller. And you get right there on the clip, it says Made in USA. So, let's go ahead and uh, give this little Arnold lever filler. An Arnold lever filler. I do not know what they called the model. So it has a steel nib on it. And you know what? It's actually pretty doggone smooth. I've been using this since I uh, was able to clean it up a little bit. I don't expect a whole lot of line variation, but you can get a little tiny bit of flex if you wanted to go ahead and you know make a thicker line. But for a cheap pen, for a $5 fountain pen, good grief, you, you, you spend more than that uh, on a Dunkin' run or, or a McDonald's run. And you get a nice, little, reliable fountain pen. So what did I put in here for ink? Well, I put in some Waterman. Harmonious. Green. And it's a fairly wet writer. So, now... For five bucks, you really can't go wrong with a pen like this. And even if you had to put a new sack on it, five bucks. I mean, come on. It'll cost you, what, two, three dollars for a sack? And for still seven or eight dollars, you would have a really good writing, competent fountain pen. This writes very smoothly. I did not have to put a new sack in this. This was new old stock. The sack is still pliable. It's still in great shape. Had never seen ink until I just inked it up uh, when I got this pen and cleaned it up. So it sat around probably uh, you know 90 years without being inked up, and it still performs great. Still has pliable rubber in it for that sack. So my advice: if you can find an Arnold laying around, even if it's used, snatch it up. It's worth trying it out for only a few bucks and on Etsy, E-T-S-Y dot com. That's where I found this and that's where I found at least one of the others uh, sitting over here, that one that was kind of its mate. Um, go for it, five bucks, plus shipping obviously, to get to your door. It's kind of hard to go wrong with that. So there you go, an underappreciated, I think, 
uh, an underrated pen that doesn't get a lot of discussion. I've the writing that I had here, for the most part, has been typical of the Arnold pens that I've used, with the exception of this one. This one didn't write anywhere near as well. I wasn't real thrilled um, with the way this one wrote. But it still works. And you can tell it's beat up. It's been around for a while. Uh, not as impressive as this. This pen right here and the others that are like it and that button filler over here have been really, really good for me. Absolutely no complaints with what four out of five of these pens sitting here in front of me and it's when you can configure that this one writes every bit as good as a Parker Duofold go figure so there you go the Arnold fountain pen